Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I do hope you're doing well. Staying safe, taking care of yourself, all that stuff out there. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It is great to meet you. Thanks for coming by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. And just, I try to experiment. I try to be creative. I try to have fun. And that's kind of what this episode is about, if you want to call it an episode. I don't know what to call it. Video, tutorial, whatever it is. I'm in Luminar 4 today. And uh, one of the great things about Luminar is um, I think it encourages experimentation. I think it encourages you to have fun. And I definitely think it encourages you to be creative. So here's a photo I took a long time ago. This is just a JPEG uh, export. I did shoot raw at the time, but this is just a JPEG export that I'm using. It's a long exposure, as you can see. This is the Loop 360 bridge, also known as the Penny Backer Bridge. Here in Austin, it's a short drive from my house, which is a short, uh, long way of saying I've shot this thing so many times so many times um but it's a great shot and if you can get it when the traffic is going like at the end of the work day that is when people used to go to offices you know i haven't been in a long time i wonder what it's like anyway my point is if you can get traffic going both ways like that with a long exposure then you can get some beautiful light trails the challenge i had here was there was nothing going on in the sky i mean there's some decent clouds and you know and i'm not trying to say it's a great photo because it's not great but it's it's nice it's okay uh, but i wanted to make it something fun and creative and different and interesting so i turned it into that i wanted to adjust colors obviously i put in a new sky and when you put in a new sky you got to kind of blend the the foreground with the sky i do some of that i'm just kind of walking through the workflow for this and basically i just wanted to overhaul the photo i wanted to take it from that to something that was more interesting and different and i think looks pretty realistic. I, I don't know. It's hard to be an objective judge of, you know, how realistic is my sky replacement. I'll let you be the judge of that. I mean, I think it kind of goes together. I think it's believable. Um, I'm not trying to pass it off as real because it's not. I'm making a video about how it's not real. But um, I think from that to that is believable, my opinion. Feel free to disagree. I'm happy to have a debate about it. Let's get into it. I'm going to hit reset and we're going to start editing this photo. Okay, here we go, and as you could tell, and as I said, the first thing I did is put in a new sky. So I went with Dramatic Sunset 2, and uh, I liked that quite a bit. However, I needed this horizon position to move up, so I'm doing that to about 35. Just trying to get those clouds a little bit higher in the sky. So something about like that, I do have to check my notes. Yeah, that's about right. So if you're replacing a sky, do that first thing just get it done before you start making further adjustments to the photo because a lot of those other adjustments i think need to be about how do you get the foreground and the new sky to match because if you look at the foreground without that sky obviously it's a bluer kind of tone uh image and that sky is very orangey yellow which i'm going to make some adjustments to but put in the sky first you'll be glad that you did then I pop over here to the light tool and start making some further refinements. Um, I am going to move this temperature up, uh, and I go to about 46 here, uh, something about like that. And I take the tint as well to about 29. Um, and if you notice, that's basically adjusting the foreground, right? So I'm, try I'm using that to get these two um, pieces, if you will, the new sky and the foreground to kind of come together. Uh, from a color point of view. I think I'm kind of getting there. Uh, I am going to add some uh, smart contrast. And here I go to about 34 or so. So let's uh, let's call it that. Now that's a little bit dark, but that's okay. I'm going to use a little AI accent. And here I'm going to about 33 or so. And um, that's uh, brightening up that foreground quite a bit. And in my opinion, the colors and the tones are starting to go together. And again, that's why I go do the sky first because if you start making adjustments to the photo and then put in the sky I feel like you got to go then and start adjusting the sky whereas put in the sky make some adjustments and then what we're going to do in a moment is get a new layer and that layer is all about taking that combined photo and blending it together uh, the next thing I did is golden hour and this is a really light touch like a 9 or 10 and so let me show you what I've done so far there's the before photo and there's the after. And I gotta admit, it's way too golden-y orange for my taste. I'm not going for that kind of a golden sunset. I'm going for the sunset kind of vibe because of, you can tell the sun is setting uh, and the sun's in the photo because of the new sky and the clouds and stuff. But I don't want this orangey vibe. I, I want a, a different kind of tone 
kind of look to the image. That's what this next layer is gonna be all about. Okay, so click on the layers panel, hit plus, add new adjustment layer. And then what I'm gonna do is get over here and I'm gonna start in the light tool. Okay, first things first, I just totally have to change the temperature here. I'm gonna go pretty extreme. I'm going to negative 50. Um, I just think that looks a whole lot better, to be honest. I'm gonna take the temperature this way and I'm going to about 20 or 21. And then I'm taking the highlights, which is really in the sky there, around the sun especially. And I'm pulling that way down as well, like a negative 80, 81. I'm just trying to tone that down a little bit because it's way too much. So already just those couple adjustments in the light tool, I've taken um, the photo from that to that, which is a significant difference. And the truth is, I kind of liked the blue tones in the previous, uh, in the base image. Uh, let me show you there. But I wanted to make some adjustments to it. I wanted a new sky. So I kind of did the new sky and kind of matched up the golden tones um, on the base layer. And in this layer, I'm going in and taking those golden tones and basically going the other way with them. And that's, to me, the beauty of layers and, and all the fun that you can have in Luminar. Okay, one thing that I think I'm missing here is some structure. So I've got, again, check my notes. And I'm going to like mid 40s here, but I don't want it on the entire photo. So this is where I get the brush mask and I'm probably gonna need to increase my brush size, something about like that. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of paint that in. Uh, and I'm kind of going sloppy here as I'm live, but I'm painting that into this, uh, uh, I was gonna say street, it is a street, it's a highway uh, here in Austin, but I'm gonna paint that into the bridge and some of the land. And you know, I'm doing a little bit of a sloppy job, but we're all friends here. So I'm just kind of uh, doing this quickly. Uh, it is bugging me a little bit over here. So I'm gonna go and hit erase. So I'm not overlapping too far into that. I don't really care about trying to crunch up texture in the water, not my goal, but I'm gonna hit done. And uh, if you look at the structure, uh, the bridge and some of that land, there it is before, and there it is after, just a little bit. I think it does a nice job. I mean, I expect the, the highway there to be a little bit crunchy. It is cement, um, makes sense. And the land, I think the land looks great, especially over there, that's Austin Country Club, it's a golf course. It's where they have the Dell Match Play Championship and things like that, if you're into golf. But anyway, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful looking golf course. I can say I've never played it. So it looks beautiful from where I've been, which is up here shooting uh, the bridge at sunset uh, about a million times. But uh, there, the golf course, I just think it looks nice with a little bit of added structure. Also gives a little bit of depth to the image because it kind of brightens it one more time. There it is before and after. Now I'm gonna come into color and I'm actually gonna take the saturation and the vibrance down a little bit. I'm not going for a super saturated or vibrant image, so like a negative eight, negative 20, just toning that down a little bit. I don't wanna oversell it. I'm not trying to say, wow, this is crazy, this is intense. In fact, I might uh, I might pull the vibrance back a little bit. I, I, I do like my color. I don't wanna to totally underdo it, but I'm just trying to be careful here because I'm trying to blend it together and just kinda of keep it tame, for lack of a better word. Now I'm gonna go over to Landscape Enhancer. And once again, I'm gonna get Golden Hour. And again, because I'm on a layer above where I adjusted that sky and all that, um, I'm adjusting the entire kind of blended image here, which is why I like to add another image, or excuse me, not an image layer, another adjustment layer on top of my base. So I combine the photo with the new sky on the base layer, and then I go a layer above that to start doing kind of global adjustments to really blend it together. And then, again, that's what I said. This layer is really about that. The light tool, I think, is helping, and this landscape enhancer here has helped uh, with golden hour. So there it is before and after, just a little bit warmer tone because you can tell that sky has some warmth in it. In it. Um, and of course, you've got those nice warm tones of all the light trails that are going up and down uh, Loop 360 here. So just trying to bring that together with a little bit of golden hour one more time. There it is before and there it is after. Now there's really just a couple of touch-up edits. I like to add mystical to these kind of shots. So I'm going to go pretty low, like a 15 or 16 global um, application of that. And same with Orton, kind of low here, like a 12, 15, something like that. And, you know, I'm just kind of um, adding this little bit of moodiness, a little bit of contrast, but now that I see it, I think I'm gonna go back up here to AI Enhance and maybe give that a tiny bit of a bump. Uh, so that's like a 12. I, I don't wanna lose visibility um, into like the bridge and, you know, it's not getting too dark, but it was getting a little bit dark because the Mystical and the Orton, they do add a little bit of contrast, a little bit of shadow. So I'm pulling that back a little bit with AI Accent. Uh, maybe maybe I'll go to 15 there. Just trying to balance it out. Let me show you what this layer has done. If I turn this off, there's my base layer with the new sky. Very warm tones. Not the look that I'm going for. 
That's why, as I've said repeatedly, that's why I added this adjustment layer. And I think I've done a really good job here balancing out. I'm trying to decide if this guy is what I want. And I think what I'm gonna do is set orientation. And I'm gonna go over here. And I think what I will do is in the upper section, so top, I think I'll take the warmth down a little bit. Um, and I think in the bottom, I might actually increase the warmth a little bit, trying to balance out the, the temperature, for lack of a better word, between this sky and the foreground. Um, adjustable gradient is a great way to do that because you get to pick the top and bottom as I just did here, and then you can adjust the temperature or the warmth, uh, you know, make it warmer or cooler in either section. So let me show you, there's the before, a little bit warmer in the sky, a little bit cooler in the foreground, and after, a little bit of the reverse, a little bit warmer in the sky, and a little, sorry, a little bit cooler in the sky and a little bit warm in the foreground. I think that helps. The point is you have a lot of power and flexibility within Luminar to do these kind of things. That's how I did it on this one. Is it believable? I mean, I don't know. It's hard to sit here and, and say it's believable when I just showed you everything I just did. And I know for a fact that I didn't see that sky. In fact, I've never seen that sky because that sky is one that was included in Luminar. But there it is before and after. I think I could say, you know, the the combination is believable. My opinion is when you post something with a new sky, I think you should disclose that um, because I'm not into, uh, I'm totally into editing and the creative stuff, but I like to disclose that that's not what I saw, that's what I made. Um, but you know, hey, to each his own. There's a couple of spots I'm gonna go take out. There's a couple of these little, um, uh, what is it, like a little thing for a no wake zone. This is a big popular boat ramp here on uh, Lake Austin. Uh, I might go take those out of the photo. They're a little distracting to me in a few spots, but I'll do that in my own time. That's my edit. That's an overhaul of a photo from, you know, not a bad photo. I really like the light trails, which is why I went there to shoot that evening, hoping for a sunset, which I didn't get. But hey, a few minutes in Luminar 4, new sky, new colors, new tones, new everything. And I have something that's a lot of fun to make. And if nothing else, I had fun making it. I hope it gives you some ideas and maybe some inspiration for trying things on your own photos. Thanks for watching, my friends. You guys are awesome. I appreciate the interaction and the feedback. And thank you for coming back all the time and checking out my videos. I'll see you real soon with more. You guys take care of yourselves and adios.